Hi, I'm Jack Kempfield. You may know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, the book The Success Principles, featured teacher in the movie The Secret. I am sitting here with Catherine Winters Celery and an amazing conversation we've had before we even started. So I'm really excited to have you hear some of the things we're going to be talking about. So, so glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and to explore all of these ideas. Yeah, me connect. too. Me too. So let's start. Just what is it you do? Let people know yeah, what you're so about. Thank you. I really work a lot with families and with the Conscious Parenting Revolution. I'm a three-time TEDx speaker. I have the best-selling book. I'm also the co-creator of what we call the Guidance Approach to Parenting, which is an alternative to rewards and punishments. And so I help people understand that when they use that method, and that applies whether it's in corporations, whether it's in your home, anywhere, Mm -hmm. that people are going to be into a reaction to that. And then we spend all of our time dealing with their reactions to having had power used over them. And so 75% of behavioral disruptions are a reaction to power being used over someone. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's fascinating. So just recognizing how I go about approaching you when I'm aware that, wow, this behavior isn't really serving you. It's not serving me either. I need this behavior to shift most parents and most companies rely on things like rewards and punishments as so-called motivators. Right. But actually, what we want is people to be motivated from within, to be self-started, and for us to be able to link into what will support someone to change their behavior that's in service to them and to others. Fascinating. Yeah. So what, what is that alternative? The alternative is the guidance approach to parenting. Say a little more about that. Yeah. So the guidance approach to parenting is recognizing that our greatest influence is through connection. So if we can connect and understand, I like to say when they say no to me or no to us, they're saying yes to something inside themselves. Right. So what's the yes that they're saying to internally in all of our settings? Like I said, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, in a corporate setting, in a family setting. And this is where I think I differentiate myself a lot is that I do a lot of corporate coaching. Mm -hmm. Even though my expertise is really in leadership effectiveness, I apply it to both the parenting as well as to the corporate situation. Right. And guidance approach recognizes that if I connect to what you're saying yes to internally, when you say no to me or reaction to me, then that's our starting point. That's great. How do you draw out or discern or discover what that yes in them is? Yes. Well, it's that's where I guess you would really benefit a lot from my trainings. <laughs> um, and this is where I can help people with their transformation is for them to understand that, yes, these are just skills. Anybody can learn them. Mm -hmm. And if we learn the skills of connection, communication, problem solving, conflict resolution, and really creating the environment in which people feel safe to fail, safe to be able to expose their inner somethings. To be authentic. To be authentic, to be real, and that they won't get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. So it's, I call it psychological safety in the workplace. I call it psychological safety at home, psychological safety at schools. I work with people in all of these different venues to be able to understand that it's about the quality of my being right. and the quality of my being extends into the quality of the atmosphere that I create around me, right. which either supports, it's like a good garden. You're either going to get a lot of weeds in the garden or you're going to be able to really create those beautiful, beautiful roses and flowers as you create the soil that's rich. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the way I term it is showing up as a safe space and creating a safe space. Yeah, exactly. People can be authentic and transparent and real. And then you can really figure out what's happening. I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing. Um, so you're obviously passionate about what you do. I'm very passionate. I grew up in a family that uh, had a lot of love. There was never a doubt about that. I had a brother who died by suicide. And while we as a family never really talked about it, and part of my passion in life is overcoming the stigma of mental health challenges. I'm a meditation teacher and I teach people how to breathe, regulate their emotions, to be able to heal their nervous systems so that they can be present in high conflict situations, low conflict situations, 
conflict within, conflict without, to have the tools. And these are the tools that if we provide the ways for our children and our friends and everyone to manage their mind. We have a, we have a mental health crisis in this country. I agree. We have an epidemic of suicides, anxiety, depression. It touches, I believe it touches all of us and all of our friends and our family and our coworkers. And everyone is looking for ways to be able to manage their own nervous systems so that they can actually be with whatever's happening inside. So part of my mission behind the Conscious Parenting Revolution, which I, co which I founded about 25 years ago, when I started raising my own children, is recognizing that if we are able to support each other in managing our minds, in being able to be present, first of all, to myself and to others, without any of the stigma around mental health, recognizing that it's just, it's another form of hygiene. Mm -hmm. You know, we have dental hygiene, we have mental hygiene. I totally agree with that. And yet most people are not, we brush our teeth every day. Yeah. But most people are not brushing their, their, their mental exactly. states every day, like meditating and breathing yes. and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. They need to. We have to have discipline in that area. Absolutely. Yeah, very yeah. good. So you're kind of talking about it a little bit, but you know, a lot of people say, okay, I'm a, I'm a trainer. I'm helping people. I, meditate, I teach meditation. I work with conflict resolution, you know, whatever. What makes your work different from other people who claim to be doing similar things? Absolutely. You know, I think that what I am able to bring is that a lot of people are a parenting coach. Mm -hmm. And so I have a ton of training in being able to support parents. And at the same time, I'm a leadership effectiveness trainer. Mm -hmm. And so I have the coaching programs and I have the, 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 all of the keynote speaking. I'm a paid keynote speaker at a lot of different functions. The differentiation for me is that I recognize we're talking about human dynamics and children are people too. And so while it can apply to work-life balance in the workplace, it can apply to work-life balance at home. It can apply to really within myself. A lot of parenting experts are not necessarily experts in conflict resolution. My background is I went to law school. I'm also trained as a mediator. And so I'm able to bring these skills into the typical places you would find them. But at home, a lot of people think, gosh, I learned all this in leadership training for my work. Right. But it never occurred to me that I could bring all of this home because when people look at children, they kind of look through a negative view of children. Like they're doing this to get at me or they're manipulating me. There's a negative view of children's behavior. And I help them recognize like, for example, if we were working together and I were coaching you, Jack, it would be that this is maybe the tragic expression of someone's unmet needs. Right. It shows up as retaliation, rebellion, and resistance. We call it the three R's. And when we use external motivators like power, control, rewards, punishments, and we activate the retaliation, rebellion, and resistance, it also contributes to low self-esteem, perfectionism concern about what's going to happen to me if I make a mistake. And so we want to transform those dynamics so that people begin to relax, as we were saying earlier, so that they make mistakes, that they recognize it's okay. It's a safe place for me to make a mistake. And that that's just one of those little things on my way to being able to find the solution. Exactly. Yeah. yeah very good. I love it. So as you work with people, what do you find is some of the common challenges that you have to help them confront and overcome? Yes. So I think on the parenting front, it's sometimes as difficult as they're shutting me out. I've lost my influence. They don't talk to me anymore. Um, those Parents are of teenagers. <laughs> parents of teenagers. Absolutely. And people will say, oh, it's normal. That's a teenager. And I'm like, no, it's not. That's a reaction. Mm -hmm. What's normal is that we keep connected so that your teens come home and open up to you. People want to continue to be the person that has the most influence over their children's lives mm -hmm. at any age. Right. But what happens is parents get fired. I help parents get rehired. That's really I what it. I do. I help parents get rehired. And I also empower children to stay connected to their inner voice by helping parents recognize that there was probably a time in their life when they were taught to be obedient and compliant and listen to someone else who 
was supposed to know what was right for them. Not always is that the case. And it's so much more important for our children to learn to be considerate of other people than ever to become obedient and compliant. Right. Because that's dangerous. And yet a lot of the approaches that parents have toward discipline is around because I said so, I'm your mother, I'm your father, and it's about roles as opposed to, hey, I would really like some cooperation here and some support, and yet I can see there's something getting in the way of that. Right. So let's talk about what's going on inside of you. And again, it's that when you say no to me, you're saying yes to something inside of yourself. Right. I used to teach motivation and they'd say, well, they're not motivated. No, they're motivated, but they're not motivated to do what you want them to do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so how do we get internal intrinsic motivation? Exactly. And that's the whole thing. People will say, my kids don't do their homework or they're not motivated, just like you were saying. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they are. Right. And if you can get out of the way of manipulation, which is one of the key factors so that that person can shine through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've had five concert pianists take my course over the last 25 years, and not one of them will touch a piano. Interesting. Yeah. So getting to that point was so emotionally painful mm -hmm. that they, parents, I guess you could say, they won the battle and lost the war. Like they got them to this incredible place where they were so extraordinary in their craft. And it was so painful every step of the way that they don't want to have anything to do with it. Right. Heartbreaking. Oh, it is. One of them said to me, my mother stole my gift. You know, it's interesting. My first wife, uh, my oldest son was gifted at juggling hmm. and he loved to do it. And then she started to say, you need to have a pattern, you need to do this, you need to do that. And she hired him a juggling coach. And by the time she was done with it, he didn't want to juggle anymore. Mm, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I've had parent after parent say, but they were so good and I wanted to give them every opportunity. And somehow in the mix of that, it turned out to be more about them mm -hmm. and less about the child's expression and joy and their driving it. Right. And so... Parents sometimes take over. Yeah. And the other thing I find is that we need ourselves. I think a lot of us adults have grown up in family systems where we weren't really allowed to separate and individuate. Exactly. And separation and individuation was somehow a threat to the family system or we learned to, to just not upset the powers that be around us. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's what's necessary to survive in our families. And so I say, okay, you know, that, that was necessary then. But now, now you get to separate and individuate. And if other people are upset around you because of that, you get to learn the skills to be able to support them through it, but not by dimming your light. There you go. You know, what's, what's, what's fascinating about what you're doing and, and it, it's, these things are not taught in school. Mm -hmm. You can go to high school, college, graduate yeah. school, and never be exposed to these life important skills, if you will, and yeah. awarenesses and the transformations and the you know the, the, the transitions that you can make into a, your own individuation. Yes, you know, accepting yourself for who you are. Yes, and so you're doing that. It's like I once said, you know, that unfortunately we have to go to school after we get out of school to learn the things that we didn't yeah. learn in school. You know, I was a history teacher, and I can tell you I've not used the five causes of the Civil War in my adult <laughs> life ever, you know, <laughs> but communication skills and yeah. how to listen and how to get, ask for what you want and how to take yes. up and deal with it and all these things that you're helping people do. And I think the thing I love about what you're doing, too, is you're, you, you, you talk about yourself as a parent educator and a leadership trainer and so forth, but we're all dealing with, we have an internal parent. We have an mm. internal child. Often that relationship doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. When we're managing someone, there's a parent-child relationship. Mm -hmm. Our parent is often activating their child. Mm -hmm. And we want to be better parents. We want to mm -hmm. be better managers. And we don't have those skills or awarenesses. And you've got a whole cornucopia of stuff. I mean, I'm so excited about what you're doing. So as people are watching this and they're going like, oh, wow, this lady's amazing. I love what she's talking about. I'm thinking I'd like to work with her. What are some parting thoughts you could share with them? I would say that when I talk to parents and I say, set your children free, it's free to be, you know, free to be me, or, you know, it's that freedom within for them to explore their world. Mm -hmm. And I can extend that and also say, see your children beautiful. 
So, you know, we, we look at our children and sometimes we get so upset when they're not acting or behaving in ways, in fact, we might feel embarrassed or ashamed. And I would say when that comes up for you, you can be with that something inside that has that arising and at the same time recognize this is someone who's struggling. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to let my feelings about my experience of you struggling become secondary. And I'm going to focus on the fact that, oh my God, look at this. This is someone struggling. And this applies across the board, regardless of age, you know, regardless of setting, whether it's in family, whether it's at work, whatever, when someone's falling apart, I look at it as they're out there in the middle of the ocean and they're drowning. And what they really need is somebody who's going to get in the little lifeboat and they're going to like, you know, row out there and they're going to pluck them out and put them in and wrap a blanket and give them some cocoa and be with them, right? Focus on our connection as humans, the humanity, be with them, not on my experience of them. <laughs> like, you know, I'll have, I, sometimes when I'm coaching, you know, parents or leaders and, and we want to focus on my experience of being around someone drowning. Okay. We can talk about that for a while, but eventually let's shift to what can I bring in this family, in this corporation to support these human beings of any age to be able to learn how to regulate, to overcome and to be able to be present more quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. I love it. Now you mentioned you do keynote speaking, you coach, yeah. you, you use the word courses. You have courses? Courses as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we've got the keynote speaking, which is at corporate events, which is also a lot in schools and mm -hmm. back to school nights and coffee mornings, as well as uh, some corporations have had me come in and run a program for all of their parent community. As parents, I think in the corporate setting, always are struggling for work-life balance. Well, not only that, but they're coming to work. And if their parenting isn't working, that they're so preoccupied, they're not focused on their work. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It needs to get in. That internal struggle. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Well, I'm excited. You're, I, I'm very excited. I wish we had more time because we have so much in common. I loved it. So if you're watching, and you are, because we're talking to you right now, I really encourage you to get in touch with her. Uh, you're going to find some information about how to do that at the end of this video and reach out to her. And um, I don't care where you are. You're definitely a child of somebody. and You've got your own internal issues, more than likely. And to understand the dynamics of that, and if you have children or you're a grandparent or an aunt or whatever, uh, if you're a teacher in school, if you're a manager, all these dynamics come into play. And I, I tell you, I interview a lot of people. I rarely interview someone that has as much passion, but more importantly, expertise that you have it is, it, from so many different angles. So I just, you know, uh, often, I don't say this very often, but I will say this. So run, don't walk. Take mm. advantage of what she has to give you. Thank you. You're welcome.